Normally, when we build models of how planets and stars form, everything is really centered around the star. The star is the anchor, you know, it's the heat source, the gravitational boss. The best way we can detect these sort of rogue planetary systems is mainly by using its parent star. Essentially, we use what we call the transit method. We observe a star and we try to look for subtle changes in its light as a planet passes through the front of the star. We can see a sort of dip in the star's spectra. We could also see possibly with gravitational microlensing by detecting a brief enhanced brightening of a more distant star as a planet hosting star passes in front of it. Either way, both of these methods require a parent star behind the exoplanet that we're trying to detect. But like I said, these ones don't have a parent star, which makes them harder to detect. So here's where James Webb Space Telescope's power really shines. Free floating planets are really tiny compared to stars and they barely give off light like I mentioned. But they do have a faint glow in the infrared range. That's exactly what James Webb Space Telescope's specialty is. In mid to late 2024, astronomers zeroed in on eight of these young wandering worlds. And what did they find? They found that six of them had extended infrared emissions, which basically means that they had warm halos of dust surrounding them. And that warm means that they emit infrared. And that warm halo of dust isn't just random fluff. It's a disk, which is the same kind of structure that forms around baby stars. And what's even more wild, Webb even picked up grains of silicate, which are tiny crystals of rock inside those disks. That's the first step in making terrestrial planets. If you like this kind of content, hit the follow button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. The link is in the bio. Keep expanding your universe, guys. See you next time.